recently had a patient of mine who actually came to us for a second opinion um, because of a severe problem related to uh, failed mitral valve surgery. Um, unfortunately, um, she developed recurrent leakage um, adjacent to where the heart valve was sewn in. She's got a connective tissue disorder and certainly has had some wound healing issues and some infectious issues. And um, all of that just added to a level of complexity where she was um, turned down for surgery. Um, when, when a patient hears that type of language, it's devastating because that means that they have really no other human options to make this functional problem any better. Luckily for us, um, just with the right talent and the right time and right technology, um, we were able to get a team together to uh, offer her uh, an alternative. Uh, in this particular case, the use of uh, echocardiography uh, with advanced technology using cardiac ultrasound techniques was very, very useful to, number one, assess the problem before the intervention, and number two, monitor uh, the patient during the procedure and guide the interventional cardiologist through the procedure so that we can have a good result here. We can see that there is a significant amount of leakage coming from adjacent to this prosthetic valve, and this will uh, help uh, positioning the instruments and the wires that need to go through this orifice to eventually put in the closure device that will plug this leakage. And of course here uh, on uh, real-time three-dimensional transesophageal echocardiogram, we can actually appreciate the, the prosthetic artificial leaflets inside that artificial valve and we can get a, uh, an impression of the size of the orifice uh, that we need to close. These are the images that we acquire in the hybrid operating room where we are accessed into the heart and we have catheters that are deployed and across the leak in the valve uh, through which we can deploy various devices with, in an attempt to help close that leak. This is a schematic and a, a movie depiction of the device that was used to close the paravalvular leak and its deployment across the mitral valve. We can see here with three-dimensional echocardiography real-time that the plug, the closure device, is well positioned out of the way from the opening of the prosthetic valve. So we have what appears to be a well-positioned, good result in this patient. And we will look at a color flow Doppler to assure that there is no significant residual leakage on that valve after this closure device is deployed. And this is uh, an example of the small incision, the small scar that is left uh, from this hybrid cardiac repair, minimally uh, invasive uh, surgical approach to treating this complex cardiac disease. I think part of the excitement here at Holy Cross as it relates to what we were able to provide uh, for the patient is that this sets the tone uh, for delivery of new techniques for complex cardiac diseases by using a multidisciplinary approach. But now that we've assembled a team, the sky's the limit in terms of new therapies that we can integrate uh, into the South Florida area to help treat some of these uh, patients that have no other options. And that is was particularly important for our patient because due to the fact that she'd had three previous open heart surgeries, she had no other options uh, for repair uh, of this uh, dysfunctional heart valve. We feel confident uh, that we will be able to uh, provide benefit to a number of uh, South Florida residents uh, with this strategy. 